Salutations! Thank you for lending an ear to The Voice of the Times for Wednesday, September 1, 2021. For today's editorial, don't spoil Boracay with the casino. The decision by President Rodrigo Duterte to allow the establishment of casinos on Boracay Island is unfortunate and wrong and will result in costs far greater than any amount of revenue the government might hope to extract from it. In his weekly Talk to the People aired during the wee hours last Thursday, Duterte said the reversal of his firm stance against gambling was necessary to provide more sources of revenue for the government. To his credit, the president acknowledged the obvious contradiction and apologized for it. Speaking in Tagalog, he explained, If you ask me why I said I don't like gambling, but now I'm encouraging the opening of a gambling house in Boracay for tourists, please forgive me for the contradiction. We have no more money. The president also recently lifted a three-year ban on the construction of new casinos in the country and in July allowed the resumption of Philippine Offshore Gaming Operations or POGOs which are primarily operated and staffed by Chinese workers. I would get money wherever I could. If it has to be from gambling, so be it. But I need money to keep the government running, Duterte said. To provide some dimension to the revenue opportunity the president is considering, in 2019, the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation or PAGCO reported that casino operations had generated a total of 56 billion pesos in tax revenues. Taxes from POGOs, which the Chinese government has repeatedly asked the Philippines to ban, amounted to about 6.4 billion pesos. That is not an insignificant amount of money, but it hardly qualifies as a miracle cure to the Philippines' financial woes. 56 billion pesos would be the equivalent of just 0.11% of the 5.024 trillion peso proposed national budget for 2022. Of course, there are other benefits to the economy, such as taxes and consumer spending, that come from gaming industry workers' salaries and the casino's place in local supply chains. These benefits, however, have to be balanced against the added social and economic costs of allowing a gaming industry including the increased risk of criminal activity, the impact on the environment, the impact on infrastructure and services, and the increased risk of social issues such as gambling addiction. All of these risks can be properly monitored and controlled, but at a cost to resources that might be better applied elsewhere. Even so, there is probably some merit in lifting the ban on new casinos. Their contribution to government revenues and the overall economy, while decidedly modest, seems to be nonetheless positive. If the country's financial shape is as bad as President Duterte seems to be suggesting it is, then every little gain will help. However, we believe that current and likely near-term reality strongly suggest that any expansion of the casino industry should be constrained to areas where it is already established and that it should be kept away from Boracay in particular. First, the COVID-19 pandemic is nearly two years old and only now peaking in severity. Any planning that assumes it will be under control by a certain date or that pre-pandemic business as usual will still be applicable is foolhardy. Furthermore, the assertive anti-gambling stance of the Chinese government cannot be lightly dismissed. China is overwhelmingly the biggest market for gambling in the Philippines. But from the Chinese leadership's point of view, gambling primarily serves the purpose of money laundering and tax avoidance for its people. It has in the past suggested, quite diplomatically to be sure, that there may be consequences for countries that do not cooperate. Given the Philippines' deep reliance on Chinese investment, this may be more of a risk than our leaders are willing to recognize. Finally, after having expended a great deal of time and money to restore Boracay to its rightful place as the Philippines' tourism destination showpiece, permitting a casino, with all the risks and stresses on the community that go with it, seems self-defeating. There are better ways for the government to raise revenues, but if those ways must be through casinos, there are certainly other places better suited for them. And that's the editorial for Wednesday, September 1, 2021. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to its digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and listen to the Voice of the Times.